Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about paint additives. Uh, so we are going to discuss the difference between all these different paint additives that are out on the market and what they do. Uh, so we're going to talk about flow improver, retarder, thinner, and uh, surfactant. Surfactant. That's a hard word to say. Surface active agent is what it's all short for, but surfactant. Um, anyways, we're going to talk about these and the properties of them. But before we get into them, I've got a little example we're going to use here of a nice little old school empire flag. And you can see we've got thinner, retarder, uh, flow improver, and surfactant. Um, we need to talk about the nature of acrylic paint. So uh, acrylic paint, which is what we tend to paint our miniatures with, is uh, different than something like an oil paint or anything like that. But the properties of the paint, paint is basically made up of four things, okay? So the four ingredients to paint are pigment. That's probably not too surprising, right? Um, that's what makes the color. Um, it can also define things like texture and stuff like that. Um, there is a binder, okay, um, which basically means, uh, in in this case, the uh, binder is what's actually uh, acrylic in this. Like, that is what makes it acrylic. Acrylic paints use an acrylic binder. Uh, basically, in acrylic paint, the uh, the binder, the acrylic paint, the acrylic medium has a sort of crystal lattice-like structure, and it traps the pigment in between it. Um, so what you get on, what you get with acrylic paint with the medium is you get sort of this shape that looks like this. It's like Superman's house or something, like very 70s, whatever. There we go, right? So you get a shape that looks like that. And pigment gets trapped in here. Now, if you add too much of the la of the, the third thing, which is your solvent, you will break down this ability to form this chemical bond, and the pigment will no longer be able to be trapped properly. Uh, if you've ever thinned your paint to such a degree that it went glossy, or that it started pooling where the pigment, where, where it seemed like there'd be like some color in one area of the miniature and then not another and it's sort of coffee stained. That's because you broke down the pigment. Or sorry, you broke down the, uh, the binder agent, okay? So our third agent is solvent. Now in most acrylic paints, the solvent is water. Um, obviously other types of, of, um, uh, of paints will use different types of solvents. Um, the reason we like water as a solvent in acrylic paint is because it's non-toxic, it's easy to paint with, we all have water in our house, we can add more water to it and thin the paint and get it flowing. But the reason that you hear people say to get your paint flowing, add water, is that's because it's breaking down that gelish like medium and pigment combination. The pigment tends to be a solid, it might be slightly translucent, but it's still a solid. The medium is rather thick and gel-like. Water acts as the solvent that breaks that all down. The more water you add, the more the paint flows. Now, the fourth thing that makes up acrylic paint are additives. And additives change the basic property. It's sort of a catch-all. Um, unlike the others, uh, unlike the other elements that we've talked about today, additives don't have like a single thing that they do. You know, the pigment makes your color and maybe texture. If you think of like typhus corrosion, the technical paint, that has a pigment that's thick and huge and that's what they're act that's acting as a, adding texture to the paint, okay? Um, your binder, your acrylic medium is doing just that. It's what locks the paint to the thing and it's what prevents, uh, it's the difference between watercolors and why you can't reactivate acrylic paint with just water like you can with watercolors. 
um, because once this lattice work locks the pigment in, it's not going to be reactivated very easily. Additives, however, do a wide range of tasks, and that's mainly what we're gonna talk about today because most of these things that we're adding to paint actually fall into the additives category, though not necessarily. We'll, we'll take a look. So, let's take these in order. We'll start with the first and most common thing you're gonna run into. I've got two different brands here. This is um, acrylic thinner or thinner medium from Vallejo. There's lots of these. Um, Lamia medium is another one from GW. Doesn't really matter. Thinner medium or acrylic thinner is exactly that. This is just medium. Now, it's probably, in most of these cases, actually had water mixed into it to some degree. Like, so it probably actually has a little solvent in it, but just enough to keep it somewhat diluted. If you had it raw, it'd probably be a little intense. Um, that's not always the case, but it's sometimes the case. And this is increasing the binder element, right? So the more of this medium you put in, um, the more that you will tend to uh, spread the pigment out and thin the paint. The job of these sorts of mediums is to get the paint thin, weaken its coverage, but not change the fundamental color and make sure that you do not break down the paint with too much solvent. If you remember what I talked about with the solvent or a water, adding more thinner dilutes the intensity of the pigment because there will be more lattice work and less pigment per drop, right? So it'll be the pigment will be more spread out. Color intensity with paint is a matter of how many of these little these little lattices have a P trapped in them. Uh, um, if you have a bunch more medium and you have much less pigment, then there's going to be like one half trapped here and then neither in these two. And suddenly you're going to have a much different, weaker paint. Okay. So that's the basic job of thinner. I went ahead and put some paint. I just have some, some of that blue that we've been talking about over here. And uh, I'll put some acrylic thinner on my palette mix some of that blue into it, and we'll show you what that looks like. So, I've just got a simple uh, dry palette over here for this purpose. So when we, when we thin with the acrylic thinner, or thinner medium, or whatever we want to call it, what we get is the more we add, we get a weaker version of the color. So if I go to a more heavily thinned item, you can see how I'm, as I'm adding thinner, it's progressively getting weaker. To the point where if I go almost all thinner, I barely get any color at all right? There's very little pigment trapped in that at all. So I can play with how much is in there. It's still there. Like, I, that's still turned blue. But it's just oh so slight, right? But ideally, it shouldn't really go glossy or anything like that. It should more or less maintain its fundamental properties because I haven't broken it down too far with just... Uh, there's the color, like the true version of the color, which is the paint straight, right? So you can see that transition there. Okay, so that's how our thinner medium acts. Now, all of these are going to be adding non-pigment to your paint. We'll talk in a separate video sometime about painting with pigment. So all of them are going to have some function of thinning the paint. All right, let's just get that out of the gate right now. Um, everything you add, if it's an additive, Think about it, you're decreasing the ratio of pigment within the paint, hence you are going to weaken the paint. That is the nature of it. Now, the next most common one that I see people, or that I use, is Flow Improver. Um, and again, this is from War Colors, they make a really nice one. I also really like Liquitex Flow Aid, you have to dilute that. Um, I like a 10 to one ratio um, of water to, uh, uh, flow Improver. Flow Improver, Flow Aid, you're going to hear it in lots of different names. 
Um, this stuff is really powerful and it is a solvent. So remember I said that there are additives. When you're adding acrylic thinner, you're basically adding more binder agent, okay? But everything else is an additive. So when I add flow improver, what I'm doing is I'm making it so the paint wicks off the brush much smoother. You see how when I go down here, up here, you can see like brush strokes and things like that when I thinned it down. But look at how smooth this comes off of here. I reactivated my ink and my F there. It's fine. Okay. Flow Improver does just that. It's effectively an additive that is another solvent. So normally your only solvent with acrylic paint, unless there's other stuff added, is going to be uh, is going to be water. When you add Flow Improver, it's much different than Glaze Medium or Lamia Medium or anything like that because you are changing the fundamental chemistry of the actual paint. In this case, it's reducing the surface tension of the water. So if you remember your chemistry, water wants to stick to its other, has a covalent bond, and it has surface tension. Hence why you can get a convex thing on like a top of a penny or something, you put a drop of water down, or why water drops exist at all. Um, flow aid changes the fundamental chemistry of that paint and makes it so the water, uh, its surface tension is greatly reduced, meaning the paint will wick off your brush more smoothly. It will flow more easily. It achieves something that neither other thinners nor water alone can do. Just adding more water will not make your paint necessarily flow. Like there's a limit to it. You can, you can do a lot with water. Don't get me wrong. Water is still the number one thing that you thin paint with and for a good reason. Um, it is the base solvent of paint. But FlowAid changes that chemistry because it breaks down that bond. It's effectively doing the same thing dish soap does. If you've ever, uh, if you ever did that little experiment where you have a little drop of water, you touch it with some dish soap and pfft, it falls apart, right? You stop getting the ability to create drops because the surface tension has been disrupted. Same thing here. It will flow off your brush much more smoothly. This means that you also have to uh, be very careful with it because if you don't wick the excess paint off of your brush and you try to apply it, it's gonna go blah and run everywhere and you don't want that. Okay, next up we have uh, retarder. So retarder medium is if, like it's called retarder medium, but it's actually an additive. Um, it's, not, it's not a true medium or a binder. Um, what this is doing is slow, the, the chief and only purpose of this basically, <laughs> excuse me, the chief and only purpose of this is to slow the drying time. So when I take retarder and I mix a little bit of it into my paint, again, there's lots of people who make retarder medium. Vallejo does, it's rather jelly, um, not jealous in slang, like it is gel-like. Um, retarder medium, again, like all of these, is going to uh, thin the paint and weaken it. But you'll notice that I didn't, I added a, a pretty reasonable amount here, but it didn't thin it as much. Okay. Now if I add more, I can get it to thin more the same way. But the more retardant medium you add, what's gonna happen is this paint is going to stay wet for a long time. Like you can see how this up here is all dry now. No gloss, no reflection. Even though I thinned it way out, there is a slight blue tint. It's not coming through super well on the camera, but like with the thinner medium, I was able to take that paint down to basically non-existent and, and still make sure that the pigment's there. Like that is a filter. That is a barely color change, but I didn't go glossy. The pigment stayed evenly focused throughout the crystal lattice, which was maintained. With this retarder medium, this is going to basically, as an additive, prevent the, uh, the solvent, the water, 
from evaporating so quickly and locking the paint into place. Like the water's evaporation leaving the lattice behind with it trapped in the pigment is what causes uh, your, that's what happens when your paint dries and it, that's why it can sometimes be a slightly different color. With this, it is staying wet for a really long time. Like that is still as wet as what I initially did. You can see I can still get in there. In fact, let's do this rather than try to put more paint on. Look at how I can still pull that off of there, All right? And that's been sitting here for a while and that is not a thick layer. I can basically get that back to the same thing as here, okay? Retarder medium can be great for doing very wide transitions over extreme colors, doing wet blending on the miniature. Um, it can be great for doing very vast transitions, say between two different colors, like you wanna go from green to pink retarder medium and then sort of wet blending that on the miniature can be a great way to go about that. Can also be good for things like void blending because you see how, or two brush blending, you see how long it's still wet and still do the same thing. All right, I apologize. My memory card died right as I was about to explain surfactants. So surfactant or surface active agents uh, is a unique liquid. It is an additive that uh, much like flow improver is going to reduce the surface tension of the liquid, but it also reduces the surface tension between the liquid and the solid. Now that meaning the paint doesn't stick as well. Now that's gonna go away when it dries, but it has a lot of interesting properties for application. You can see here, I already applied some of it onto my, my model, but what it lets me do is by laying down a base with my surfactant on it, it means that it's less adhered to the surface and it makes it easier for me to push the paint around on top of it. So what I can do is things like slide that paint down and it will, much like the flow improver, it'll help to break it down, wick it off the brush, but it will also mean that I have a longer time to move the paint around. Surfactant is really interesting because it allows us to um, to both at the, have the benefits of flow improver, but also some of the benefits of retarder, though it doesn't truly slow the drying time as much. It just makes it more easy to move the paint on the surface. The other advantages to surfactant are uh, interesting tangential benefits. Surfactant is naturally antimicrobial, so mixing a little bit of it into your wet palette or your paint water makes it so they get sinky less, and less chance for mold and stuff like that. They'll keep it more clean. Surfactant, when mixed into your paint cup, okay, also has the big advantage of, remember, it reduces the tension between a liquid and a solid. What else is liquid on a solid? How about your paint on your paint brush? So if you've ever gotten paint down in the ferrule of the brush, having a little bit of surfactant in your water can actually help more easily pull the paint off, help your paint brushes stay clean and smooth and sharp, prevent fraying, stuff like that. So it's a really useful product, okay? So, um, like I said, surfactant's interesting uh, in its different properties. Let's review all four of these in turn since we kind of blew through them all. So first off, acrylic thinner. That's our binder agent. This is adding more medium. The more of this we add, the more our pigments get spread out in the bonds. In other words, the less little peas for pigment end up in every individual lattice, okay? Our additives, our flow improver breaks down the surface tension of the water, lets it wick off your brush easy. Great for things like doing sharp lines, very tiny detail like eyes where you need to um, really just touch the paint to the miniature and have it flow off properly. It will flow like crazy though, so make sure you wick off any excess. Retarder slows your drying time. The more of it you use, the more it will slow your drying time. Gives it properties more like a heavy body acrylic or like a, or oil paint. Allows you to do heavy wet blending or really strong transitions much, much easier. As you can see, this right here is still wet. This is like 10 minutes later, okay? So, careful with how much retarder you add. Finally, surfactant, um, your surface active agent, 
um, breaks down the tension like flow improver between the water itself, but also does the same thing with the uh, liquid to the solid, um, can help your paint, uh, can help you smooth out your paint, will help as a, as a strong solvent, it will break everything down a little more smoothly, make it more easy, gets rid of things like brush lines. Also keep some in your paint water and in your wet palette to keep them fresh and clean um, and to help pull the extra paint off your brush. So there you go. That's sort of your paint additives explained. Um, I certainly hope that was useful for you and gave you some additional thoughts on how to use these um, in practice. Um, I use all of them in different situations depending on what I'm trying to achieve. Uh, and you can mix them together. I will frequently use retarder with a little flow aid to both keep the paint wet but still flowing. Um, and that's fine. Things like, you know, adding more thinner. If you have more thinner, it will dry slower as well. This will act pseudo like the retarder because this does not dry as fast or evaporate as fast as water, right? So all these have some interesting properties can be mixed together. I would encourage you to experiment, but hopefully I've given you the some guides here to, to send you along your way. Um, but there you go. So uh, hope that's helpful. Give it a like if you liked it. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. Uh, as always, I appreciate you very much watching this. If you have suggestions for future hobby cheating videos you'd like to see, drop those down in the comments. Always happy to help. Uh, but as always, I thank you for watching this, and we'll see you next time.